a July Saturday out here, Mitchell. It is. It is. It's, it's 75 hot. degrees. Probably warmer. It's probably warmer than that. I feel like at any second I'm gonna have to throw Cover on up. one of those long sleeve sun shirts because yeah. I'm about to get roasted today. It is a beautiful day out here. And today we got a little bit different kind of video, which I've been actually I already shot one time on a different lake a week ago that had no audio to it. So um, instead of posting a 25 minute video with no audio, <laughs> which probably would have been super enjoyable for you guys, figured we'd just come out and reshoot it again. But today we're out here and taking the deep dive into probably one of the most commonly asked YouTube questions we've been getting. When do you use each of these big poles with a big transducer on it right here? Yeah, or what's better? That's a Or what's better? Most people question. ask, what's Which, better? What should I spend my and money And that's a loaded on. question, isn't that it? That is, the, <laughs> that's a tough one to answer. Yeah, yeah that's like yeah. what's better, your right shoe or your left shoe? Yeah. Which one do you <laughs> exactly. want Exactly. But anyways, today we're taking a deep dive into the Hummingbird Mega Live and the 360. Two tools we've been using now you guys have seen us use. And maybe you guys have one of them, maybe you guys have neither of them, maybe you guys have both of them. But we're, today we're gonna go into kind of how you use one of them, how you use the other one of them, how you use both of them together for maximum efficiency. And this video is not gonna be about catching 25 walleyes, so if that's what you want, and there's probably other videos on the channel that are good for you, this video is gonna be about specifically how you use these tools and how we use them and kind of how you can use both of them in conjunction to kind of to maximize your efficiency, right? Yeah, to sum it up, super easy in yeah, my terms. Make here. it in Satan layman's <laughs> terms here, Mitchell. We use side imaging to find structure, find clean edges, find weed edges like we're fishing today or find fish, right? Drop down 360 and that thing sits there and updates. You're kind of you giving can, the you're kind of giving them the like, video right now. It, kind of, maybe, but we still have to do it in mm -hmm. real time. So 360 scissors and updates, and you can kind of stay on these pods. Live takes it just an absolute step further where you can literally pinpoint exact footage right where the fish are and put your baits right on top of them in real time. But Mitchell, I don't want to be twirling my live pole around all day long. So what tool do I use? Sit, don't oh. get away. <laughs> so we're going to get into it here. We're going to show you guys, break it down, hopefully catch a couple walleyes this afternoon. Um, show you guys how we're using the Hummingbird Mega Live, how you show, showing you how we're using the 360 and mix in side imaging to find fish along the way. So stay tuned. Let's get it going on. Let's find some fish. We're going to start out just using the live and uh, maybe catch a fish doing that. And then maybe we'll throw it on the 360, talk about that, and then use them both together. What do you think? Yeah, sounds good to me. Stay tuned. Let's do it. All right, guys, so we are about to start looking on spot number one here with the Hummingbird Mega Live. And what we're gonna be doing here today is gonna, we're gonna be looking at a bunch of these weed edges. I gotta get the trolling water down here quick. Oh yeah. Should but basically we're gonna be looking at a bunch of these weed edges or fish just outside of a weed edge or something to that effect. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm just gonna put the trolling motor on high. I'm gonna start flying down this spot. We might not see any here. We might end up on another spot, who knows? But um, we're gonna start flying down it with the side imaging. Now what we're gonna be essentially looking for is fish on a weed edge that looks something like this. Now when I hit fish on my side imaging, those fish are either right there or they're right there. So the first thing I do is take the live, point it right in that direction. Or sometimes as I'm looking for fish, what I'll do is I'll take it and point it in this direction so it's facing forward so that basically I'm, I'm looking at this quadrant of water right now. So I can see fish before they get to me. If that weed edge is off my left, which is normally where I like to keep it, that means I'll, I'll be seeing weeds on my side imaging on my left and when fish come perpendicular to me, I'll see them. But I'll also see fish before they get to me off my left right here because this is kind of running at an angle like this right now. So. Basically what's gonna happen is hopefully we see some fish either on the live or the, um, the side imaging right away. We'll turn this to see exactly where we are. We'll pitch to them and hopefully get a fish to bite on camera. Yeah. yeah well, These fish don't know we're coming. Oh, I'm down. Oh, you are down. Let me get out of the way. Let me just get out of the way. Fish on, boys, right there. <laughs> oh, man, and that is just the sequence that goes down so many times, isn't it? Yeah. Come into an area, see fish on the uh, Mega Live, and kind of make that super pinpoint of cast to them. You guys can see how many fish were there, and it was not a lot. It's going to be a really nice walleye here, Mitchell. Really nice walleye. And... 360 has absolutely changed the game for this style of fishing. I'll walk them around oh, over here. Oh, it really has. It's incredible. And we're using a combination right now of side imaging and mega live. Ooh. And um, a lot of times what you end up doing is you end up finding those fish actually with the uh, 
um, side imaging. And then what yeah. you end up doing is looking for them right here. So now I can see them again, obviously. They're right over here. They're just at the end of my 60, 65 foot range. Yep. So if Mitch, catch, Mitch might have to change right his now. angle and cast about 10 more feet and he'll have these fish on. And I hit those fish off my left side and I ended up just driving at them kind of sideways to them so we could get a little bit closer to them and made that pinpoint a cast. And uh, immediately, Bobber goes down, and there they sit again. And we'll kind of take that I little be, screenshot for be you right guys here. In them here too, so maybe I'll get one on camera for yeah, you. Yeah, maybe Mitch will get another one here too. Sometimes they get real spooky, kind of after you pull one out of the school in the middle of the day. But man, that is absolutely as good as it gets. And just a testament to uh, how you can, you know, be so unbelievably efficient with this technology. And we're going to go into 360 and live on this video every, obviously, but we want to start with the live and kind of show you guys the method of fishing we're doing with a lot of this kind of spot and stock type of walleye fishing. There's just a beautiful midday walleye right there, chasing them around with the Hummingbird Mega Live. Doesn't get much better than that. All right, guys, well, it is officially time here to start running some 360, and we'll probably put the live in as well, and you guys will just kind of play catch up here. But basically what you're gonna see, just make sure that thing goes in straight. It should be set straight, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. So basically what you guys are gonna see here is kind of how we use both these things together. We got a cord tangle here, which is just what happens kind of when you got so many different transducers you're running all the time. But we'll get them both locked in here. Now, I'll go ahead and flip it to 360 for you guys. And we'll kind of start cruising into this weed bed and just kind of give you guys the lowdown here, even if we're not seeing fish. The finding fish part might take a little bit longer than just kind of walking you guys through the process here. Yeah. But 360 is kind of doing its thing right now. And I'm going to crank the speed up a little bit for you guys. And we're going to kind of start working into this. Now, what you guys are going to see here on 360 as it starts to fill itself in is we'll kind of run into a weed edge up here. And in a second here, we should start to see it as we come into it. But 360, great tool, because I can obviously see 360 degrees in close to real time with what's going on around me when I'm on a clean edge. So we're going to come into this here. That shadow off the uh, right we're getting right now is just the uh, uh, from the live sonar. We've got to raise it up a little bit. But as we come into it here, we should start to see some weeds. If there's still weeds here, Mitchell, is there? All right, so what you guys are going to see here is we got this really thick patch of weeds off the right side on 360. I'll go ahead and take a screenshot for you. So there we go. Now, if I flip it over to live and turn it in that direction, what you're going to see is that really thick patch of weeds right there. And this is essentially what we're also going to do when we start finding fish. We're going to do the same thing where we might use the 360 to say, okay, the fish are in this direction you know, going by what the 360 will tell us. And then we'll say, okay, let's say maybe you could see the back of this weed edge is like right around in this zone here, which is kind of actually, as the boat shifts, it's kind of right to our left. So if I flip this thing kind of here, you should see a weed edge somewhere right in this zone right here. So that's pointing straight this way now. So there's my weeds right there, pretty thick. And as I go this way, there's the edge. And there's actually, you could just see the couple of smaller couple of fish, fish right there. there not really exactly what we're looking for but you know this is if i go straight backwards again you guys will see those weeds if i go farther to my left no weeds some perch and stuff like that if i go straight back to my right where we found those all those uh weeds on the 360 obviously it's very thick there thick. so this is the same process we're going to go through once we find the walleyes we're going to say okay the walleyes are right there they're on that edge spin the live over there and then make that pinpoint and cast to the fish and this is a unbelievably precise way to get in front of fish, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's it's ridiculous actually. <laughs> so let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. You're down, you're down.
They shot them, boys, right there. Watch them come up. Right out of that school. Right out of the school. And that is the perfect example of using 360 in conjunction with live. And I kind of took screenshots as we kind of went around there. And that is still a pretty good pot of fish sitting there, huh, yeah, Mitchell? Yeah, still there. You can tell they're smaller fish. You can tell they're not uh, quite the size of the walleyes on that last spot. Look at that, you know, beautiful little 15 incher right there on a beautiful summer day. Sharp shooting them right off the live and the 360. And you guys kind of saw when we rolled in there, kind of what we were looking at. And I'll see if I can go back here and take some of these. Yeah, we kind of got the perfect screenshot here. So we're using that obviously in conjunction with the live. The 360 phenomenal for fishing a pattern like we're doing today on a lot of these outside weed flats. Or, you know, you could pick them apart on that 360. See them there still, Mitchell? Yep. See them right there? Okay, you know, that's the screenshot we're looking at. We'll flip back to live real quick. Okay, point it right in that direction and you can see those fish sitting right there. And we'll take a good screenshot for you guys right where those fish are. And you basically just make that cast. Get them on a fish there too. You make that cast and obviously, you know, with the live, it gives the ability to just drop it on their head, you know, which is obviously exactly what you want to do. And you guys can see how efficient that is kind of when you roll into spots. Not a big school of fish for sure. Definitely a couple decent, you know, five, six, seven decent marks in there. But uh, you, know, you can pick apart all these pods of fish, especially in a lot of situations like this outside weed edge using these two tools. Man, was that a hook set. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it? I think I had a little extra slot, a little more than I wanted. That 15 on inch wall, I didn't know what he asked for. He had no idea. He's a nice little guy, though. Yeah, I'll take it, take it, take it. So, as, we, as we've kind of kept sitting here, I took a little drone sequence. Just a beautiful Mitchell's, drone uh, sequence. Mitchell's pitched a few bobbers out, kept toggling that, that live around. Yep. And our pot of fish is definitely shrinking, but there's still some sitting right on the outside of that weed edge, aren't they? Yeah, Just, what's super cool about this fish is. As we were sitting here, I spotted two of them on live out at 50 feet, or uh, 40 feet, sorry. And I think my bobber, there you go, little guy, was probably about, uh, yeah, my bobber's at 50 feet. I spotted the fish at 40 feet, so I just reeled in a little bit, dropped, you know, waited probably about three seconds and it went down. So it's just, it's insane how much you can pinpoint and put it right on top of these fish like that. I would yeah. have never known that fish was at 40 feet, just, you know, using 360 or side imaging even. I would have just left my bobber out there because like, oh, hey, there's It looks more similar on sight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and it takes, the big thing is not making sure that every time you're watching the jig go into the walleye's mouth, the big thing is where are those fish? How far away are they? What are they relating to maybe in some situations and exactly where I need to put my bait. Right. That's the, sell, the sales pitch. That should be the sales pitch for all these forward facing things. Right. Is it cool to watch a fish, you know, when you get that perfect shot and they fly up and they eat? Oh yeah, it's super cool. But what's more cool is coming into a spot that right now there's one pod of like eight fish there. And they're super finicky. If you flew through here with side imaging, you'd say there's two walleyes here. You sit right. here with the live and the 360 and you keep moving it around, following those fish around. And you're, you, can continue, you can continuously put baits in front of those fish. Now, what's the other thing that needs to be said about this technology? Is it easier to put your bait around fish when you really understand these things and you know all that kind of stuff? Absolutely. Yep. So catch and release, so unbelievably important. With yeah, the amount of information, really you know, I'm obviously guilty of sharing a lot of information because it's my job. It's what I like to do. I like coming fishing and producing educational content. But with that being said, it's easier to get information than it's ever been. And it's easier to come out and duplicate that stuff than it's ever been. So catch and release, unbelievably important everywhere you're walleye fishing right now. You got your mic on? Oh, shoot. You guys not even mic'd up. Time to talk bad about them. So <laughs> that is gonna wrap up today's video, guys. One thing Mitchell just recommend that we should talk about was actually what we didn't talk about a lot was maybe when to use one versus the other. When is a time to exclusively use maybe a 360 and when's the best time to exclusively use a live and forget about the 360. Because each, whatever you have, whether it's a side imaging, a sonar, a down imaging, a mega live, a mega 360, a blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a t each of them is a specific tool meant to do a specific job. So a situation where 360 would we wouldn't be using it a lot would be in a deep water, hard bottom scenario. Right. Right? Right. Not using it at all. Where we're maybe fishing a 20-foot rock bar, where those fish are a foot off bottom. We're never going to pick those fish up 
on the 360. Now, 360 might be good for looking at and saying the biggest boulders are right there, but if we're just trying to fish for fish, uh, 360 might not be the best option. But right. what would be a phenomenal option at that point in time? Would be live. Live, because you could take it, you could spin it around. We used it on forward mode all day, but you can also turn it to down mode, see what's right below you, see fish kind of in a swath of water that looks like this, versus you know using forward mode and changing it around like this. But that would be a great time for the live, where the best time to use 360, or you know, let's say you're fishing and it's May and you're fishing a five foot sand flat. Where right. fish, there might be one fish here, two fish here, two fish over here, one fish there. You could sit here and do this all day with the live in that situation and just slowly pick apart fish, but this would get pretty ridiculous. Yeah, so, and half the time you probably wouldn't even be fishing because you're just trying to sit there and stay on them live time. And, you know, you can't catch fish if you're not fishing for them. Yeah, so what's the best thing to use in that shallow water sand situation? Side imaging and 360 in conjunction. Side imaging with and 360 in conjunction. Come into a spot, see fish on side imaging, get the trail motor down, use 360 to pinpoint those casts. The shallower water you get, fish have less of a tendency to sit like this and more of a tendency to sit like this. Right. So you're casting at individuals or small pods using the 360 and those screenshots look something like this so each one definitely has its time and place when fish get in deeper water a lot of times i find myself using obviously the live a lot more now like from here until fall yeah um, where a lot of times anytime i'm fishing a big shallow flat maybe that's a lake in southern wisconsin you're fishing maybe that's a late fall jig bite that we fish on weed edges all the time up here yep. whatever or maybe that's a leech lake where you fish a lot of plain sand where fish are very nomadic all the time and 360 would be your best friend and you could spend all day chasing fish on live and it might not amount too much so each one definitely has its time and place we wanted to kind of put this in here kind of at the wrap up of the video just to seem like we didn't shortchange you guys on some one versus the other type of situation yeah and it's not like we don't use traditional sonar obviously we do all yeah the we, use, we, we use we use 2d and down, down imaging so. Yeah. all the time too each thing has its place yeah so it's but, not like you have to go out and try to buy these things right but no if you're we, thinking about it or if you're on the fence about it hopefully this kind of showcases how we use it and how much more efficient it can make you on the water it's definitely it's it's worth it it's oh it's 100 percent worth it it's fun technology to play around with but hopefully this kind of gave you guys a good idea like mitch said we're going to wrap the video up there it's a beautiful 75, 85 degree day, yeah, and we warm. might just go spend some leisurely time on the water. But I appreciate you guys watching this video. And uh, any last words, Mitchell? Nope. Thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully you guys, you know, took something out of this video today, and you know, hopefully it eliminates some of those questions that you had on. That looks like more fun than what we're doing. That does look like fun. I know. I snapped my head back earlier looking at that, thinking. Man, Let's go do that. I want to go do some wake surfing right now. I'm done <laughs> right. fishing. Well, I appreciate you guys watching. If you guys are not yet, please subscribe. Stay tuned for more content. We'll see you next time.